Hello everyone, and today we're going to check out another framework that can animate pose control called Animate X. For example, like this, we have a cartoon jelly and a cartoon character whose face isn't detected as a human face. We're also able to animate this cartoon character or other creature's styles. It can do control pose motions similar to what we've done before with mimic motion or the basic way in animate diff using DW pose, open pose, and line art for animations. But this framework is much easier to integrate and configure in many ways. That said, there are some pros and cons here that I'll discuss in this video. So let's check it out, this framework. This framework is called Animate X. It's for universal character image animations with enhanced motion representations. Basically, it's similar to frameworks like Easy Animate or Uni Animate, but it's enhanced for multiple types of image recognition to improve motion. For example, as I mentioned earlier, you can use it for different creatures or animals, like a dancing cat. One example I did two days ago was a cat hip hop dancer, like this one. I was able to generate not just 2 seconds but 16 seconds of video in one generation. That means I can plug in an image and source video, and it generates 16 seconds of video in one go. It can recognize which parts of the character or object will act as the skeleton for open pose. For example, it recognizes the hands, legs, and head of the character. Then we can animate it using just one source image for styling. Of course, with a character like this, we can do dance motions, but for human dance characters like this one, it's not just limited to dancing. You can do walking or jumping motions, but it doesn't always perform as well. Maybe because from a human perspective, if a human character acts weird or morphs strangely, it's very obvious and doesn't look good. But for cartoon characters or animal characters like this one, it looks and feels much better. And that's what this framework specializes in. This framework is created by the Ant Group and Alibaba Group, who are, of course, very aggressive in the AI segment of the technology industry right now. Let's check out what they've built into this framework. Overall, it uses driving videos to run the motions. We use DW Pose and Clip to understand the type of motion and pose, which is then applied to the diffusion process. Of course, we also have the reference image. These two components, driving video and reference image, are brought into the encoder, sampling, and decoder. The result is the animated video. For non-technical people, this is the basic overview of how it works. You don't need to understand all the technical terms like cross-attention, FFM, or other jargon. Those are for computer science backgrounds. You can skip that part. All you need to know is that you need two things, a driving video and a reference image. These are the basics for creating your animated videos. Here are some examples. As you can see, it's able to generate character movements, not just dancing, but dance movements are a great example for research and motion detection purposes. That's why many demos using this kind of framework use dance motions to demonstrate how well it can handle the complexity of human movement as you can see, it's able to detect movements even if the character doesn't have hands, like this jelly bean cartoon. It can still animate the jelly bean to move along with the pose motions driven by the open pose skeleton. Now let's see how we can use this instead of just looking at demos. We have the Comfy UI Uni Animate W custom nodes, which can run in Comfy UI. These were originally built for Uni Animate. When I searched on GitHub, I found this custom node package and it shows the progress of updates. Two months ago, they integrated Animate X nodes into this package. Now we can run both UniAnimate and Animate X in Comfy UI. Both frameworks are very similar. They use DW pose for motion reference and a single image for video animations. Here we have the UniAnimate demo workflow diagram and next to it is Animate X. As you can see, the two frameworks are very familiar both use open pose and DW pose as motion guides. However, there's a key difference. UniAnimate is trained and designed for human character motions, while Animate X is enhanced to handle animals, creatures, or cartoon style characters. It can follow the driving video motions for the output result. So I think this Anime X framework has kind of carved out its own unique position in the animation framework market right now. You know, on a lot of social media platforms, for example, TikTok, you can see animations where they're not using human characters for the movement. Instead, you see things like a fox head or a cat moving like a human. This framework is able to produce those kinds of videos. And if you scroll down, you'll see that it's been getting updates very recently. There are constant updates in these custom notes. 
The last update was in December 2024, which integrated Anime X version 2. Also this month, Uni Anime and Anime X checkpoint files can now be combined into a single hugging face repository, so you can download everything from one place. The same author who created this framework is also behind this hugging face repository. You guys can download it. One thing you need to pay attention to is that the animate underscore x underscore ckpt.pth file, which is about 7 gigabytes, is used for anime x. These files are going to run for uni anime, so you can download either one. But right now, at this moment, I've just downloaded anime x. Of course, you'll also need the pose models, the clip models, the DW pose, the YOLO link, and the V2 files. These are the stable diffusion 2 files here, the base models. So we're going to use these files, and you can run either Anime X or UniAnime, or download everything and run both frameworks in Comfy UI. Since I've already downloaded the files, they're located in your Comfy UI custom nodes folder, specifically the Comfy UI Animate W folder, which is, of course, the custom nodes package folder. You'll see the names here, and it will install these custom nodes when you're in Comfy UI. There's also a subfolder called the checkpoints folders. So put all those files you saw earlier from the Hugging Face page into this folder path, and you're ready to go for the next steps once you finish downloading all the model files. But before that, of course, we need to run Comfy UI and download the custom nodes themselves. So go to the Comfy UI interface. Right here, you'll go to the Comfy UI manager at the top of this button. Some people still ask, what is this? If you don't know what the Comfy UI Manager is, I think you should go back to those fundamental tutorials on how to set up Comfy UI before diving into more advanced stuff. So go to the Comfy UI Manager, search for custom nodes, and right here we're going to type in this name. You'll see this result pop up, which comes from this author. Since I've already installed it, if you haven't installed it yet, you'll see an install button in this column. Just click that install button and it will help you download all those files and handle the installation. Once you finish, restart your Comfy UI and refresh the page. Remember, some people still ask, why did I install some custom nodes but I still can't search for them? Well, it turns out they didn't refresh the page. So do that if you're asking this kind of question. What I've done in testing this workflow is try out this Animate X custom node. Now, there are a few types of animated images with Animate X, which I'm using right now, this one is called Animate X Long, and it's able to generate longer length videos. For example, you have the max frames here. By default, this is an input field in the text box node here. So by default, it's set to 16 frames. Of course, you'll need to adjust this setting. The longest video I've generated so far is around 500 or 600 frames. On an NVIDIA 4090, it's still able to generate, and I believe it can even go longer. But I just didn't want to spend too much time trying to generate something even longer. Of course, if you load videos for your input driving image or input driving videos, then you'll have the frame count here. So, by doing this, I'm able to connect this to the max frames, and both inputs are synchronized. When you set the frame load cap here, for example, in this very short demo animation, I set it to 24 frames. Then, the frame count passes the output of these numbers to the max frames input of this Animate X long custom node. Now, this is one of the examples of how you can use the custom node itself. There are other examples you can find in the GitHub repositories. If you go back to Comfy UI Unit Animate, you'll see a new workflow folder. Right here, you've got the new workflow folder. Click on it and you'll see some examples shown here. You can try that out if you want to test how it's going to run. Then this framework, or this group, also comes from the examples that I've tested. And of course, as I mentioned, there are also many custom nodes within this custom node package. You'll see a lot of types such as Anime X Image Vi 2, X Image Long, and Repositions Image. There are lots of different kinds of tools that you can play around with. So, in this video, I just want to focus on Anime X right now. As you can see, I have a 24 frame TikTok dance demo video here. Let's pause this for a second. It's kind of like a GIF if I see this looping. Of course, we have a reference image. We have this AI generated image for the reference. By default, it doesn't have a resize image function to adjust the dimensions. I added this resize image just to make the adjustments a little better. Then you'll see the preview of that. Or if you prefer, you don't need that for the adjustment. Of course, you'll need to connect this here where you have the input and the videos for the animations. 
as we've just mentioned in the framework diagrams, we need both elements in order to generate the animations. So go to the animations. Right here, I have the videos combined showing the animation. By default, this framework is set at 8 FPS, which means the frame rate is going to be very low. You'll need to adjust that yourself. I've set this example at 16 FPS, so it's able to, you know, make the motions a little faster. But as you can see, the resolution isn't high here. So this is the raw generated output. Some people who've seen my other raw generated outputs say that these kinds of first generation video results aren't high quality and they don't understand why. You know, many AI tools that you subscribe to on other websites, like some AI video generator platforms, upscale or enhance those dimensions and improve the video quality before they show you the output. You know, in Comfy UI, we're so raw, we configure things step by step here. That's why you'll see a very raw and small dimension output here. Of course, you'll need to bring that to upscalers and such. So, here's one of the issues with Anime X, or this kind of one image driven video framework. As you can see, when we generate using humans as characters, sometimes the hands morph, fingers aren't clear, and in some cases, even the face gets broken. This is a very common scenario when using animation frameworks like this, or we have to change something in order to make it better. What I've done is use Animate Diff again, a very good old framework and motion model that we've had all along, especially since Comfy UI was released, you know, almost two years ago. Right here, we have the custom nodes connected, and I've actually used this in my previous workflow that I talked about in Rave Animate. Well, some of the nodes I haven't used anymore, but I'm still able to, you know, bring those concepts such as the animate diff settings and use V3 for stable diffusion 1.5. If you use SDXL, you can use that as well. Currently, I like to use these two animated motion models. And of course, we have settings here using LCM, which allows us to generate faster. Then we go down to here. This is the part that I've brought along to the new workflow that I just showed in Anime X, which is the detailer. I'm using the Ultralytics Detect Provider, where we use the segmentation model with YOLO models for person, hands, face, and even eyes. You can detect those as well. We bring that into the impact pack. This is, you know, one of the OG custom node packages that you have to download if you're playing around with Comfy UI, you know, using the bounding box to define where the locations we want to refine. For example, here I have a face or a hand detected by the Ultralytics detection provider. It detects the bounding box and it will send these segmentations, a list of segmentations for each image frame. It passes that to this custom node called the S segment detailer for animate diff. This is going to render a new video frame as the output result through the segmentations. Here it refines like this. In this case, I select the hands. It refines the hands and then passes that to the last step, which is the segment paste. This will paste the new segmented image to replace the part in your original video frames. I just brought this area of custom nodes to the new workflow here because it works and is able to fix those hands, able to at least make the fingers visible. Even though this is in 512 resolution, I'm still able to see the hand clearly right now. Of course, if you need higher resolution, you'll have to bring it to an upscaler again. You'll need to handle that part. This is how we can refine the image step by step like that. And for the color tone here, because I've set the sharpen image, adjusted the color tone, and tweaked the contrast of the adaptive sharpness here, the color tone in the final output looks a little different. The contrast and sharpness are different from what I have in Anime X. Anime X by default doesn't do any color enhancement or try to adjust the contrast of the image output for the videos. So you can adjust that, it's your freedom to do it whichever way you want. But that's just my habit or my way of doing things in this custom node group. So, yeah, that's how we can enhance and fix those morphing hands and faces in some cases. Not all cases, of course. If you're getting results where the hands are really broken, or you can't even detect that it's a hand, then of course the AI won't be able to use that image frame to detect it as a hand in the bounding box and fix it, and this is the generated result. Of course, we get this as the final output in this workflow here. By default, this workflow, or this Anime X custom node, is not very complex. You can just use only these nodes here to receive the image and the driving video, plug them in, and run it yourself. 
Again, this is available in their workflow examples folder. You can check that out. Also, of course, if you want to do more advanced stuff, like in this example here, you can use Animate Diff, or in newer AI video models, use transformer based AI video models to regenerate or re render those image frames in the video that's generated here. But then, using Animate X, it's more friendly for lots of people using consumer PCs, and I feel it's easier to configure. It's more controllable for users. Sometimes, you can even use unsampling and resampling in this part, and you can even change the outfit, clothes, or background of the generated video. But then, in this case, I don't think it makes sense to change those elements in the video because you already have your input image here, which you can use as the generated AI image. For example, in another example I have, I've got another AI generated image here using a cat dancing. Let's try this one. You'll see how that goes. But one thing to remember is that if you're using animals as the character, like this cartoon style animal, and you go to the animate diff segment fix here in this group, you won't be able to use the YOLO Ultralytics detector. This is YOLO 8 which I'm currently using. It's trained for human characters, not for animals. So by doing that, you're going to disable this group and only use this anime diff group to resample and clean it up one more time from the output image or video generated by Anime X. That's the way to handle cartoon or animal characters like this, to resample again and, you know, generate clearer, better results, etc. So let's try that out and see how it goes. Here we've got the cat character animated here, where you can see it's able to move its hands, legs, and even the head a little bit in this part. Of course, if you set the frame cap longer, maybe generating 300, 400, or even 500 frames, you'll be able to generate something like what I just showed in this example, the whole motion of the cat dancing like that. This way we still have a little blur on the hands, but again, Animate Diff helps us fix those parts. It gets a little smoother, of course, for coloration and everything else, you can set that using the checkpoint models. I'm using the Photon LCM, a very good old checkpoint model in Stable Diffusion 1.5, and also setting those conditions in text prompts, where you're able to tune the coloration, image quality, etc. Configuring it yourself. Here, I haven't done any modifications just by default using my usual template for styles. Right here, I'm using Animate Diff, which is a very common connection of all those nodes that I've used in my previous workflows, where I've mentioned and talked about a lot before. If you're new to Comfy UI, Animate Diff, etc., you can check out some older videos. A lot of those videos explain a lot already about using Animate Diff and, of course, ControlNet. Here, we're using Line Art and the Animate Control Net Checkpoint. This is from one of the animated checkpoint models. Again, check out those previous videos. I've talked about that as well. So we focused on Anime X in this video, and so far it looks pretty cool. I would say it's better than Mimic Motion in some cases, because as we've talked about previously, Mimic Motion is mostly used for uh, TikTok dance videos and such. But if you search on Google, you'll find some videos, including my previous ones, that show up a lot in the search results. However, if you go more technical and analyze how the framework works, Mimic Motion is more tailored for human characters. So, in some cases, it doesn't run well or at all for anime style characters. For example, if you have a cat or, as seen in many examples in this showcase, a jellyfish, a hawk from Wukong, or even a rabbit, it won't be able to animate using Mimic Motion. Or in some cases, it might work but won't perform very well in identifying the body parts of the character. But with Anime X, I can see that it has been enhanced and trained to handle different types of characters for animation. So you guys can check that out. This animation are basically controlled by Open Post Control Net Skeleton and Create Motion to animate the image. You don't need a lot of Control Net or Line Art Control Net to create these animations. That's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.